this is a contest where Democrats are saying, essentially, we have to destroy democracy in order to save democracy. Chris Rufo, who's been on this show many times, and Chris is from the Manhattan Institute, he has been the really the thought leader behind taking out DEI in our institutions. He was working with DeSantis to help do it here in Florida. He is the one that basically exposed Claudine Gay at Harvard for all of her plagiarism. Uh, he was on Joe Rogan's show yesterday talking about how the anti-democratic movement that the left has become is, is actually destroying the country and uh, perhaps we should do something about that. When you look at the current political landscape, um, particularly uh, these, uh, these trials, how disturbed are you by what seems to be this acceptance that people have for prosecuting political opponents? Because to me, it's, regardless of what you think about Donald Trump as a human being and the, the polarizing figure that he is, setting the precedent of trying your political opponents to somehow or another either put them in jail or make them seem like complete total criminals in a way that would, for the casual, for the person who's not reading deep into the headlines, for the, the casual Democrat that sees this Trump real estate thing that just happened where he got fined $365 million, you, the casuals, I've, I've seen people argue, you know, that, you know, fraud is fraud and this is that and he's a fraud. And, and then I saw Kevin O'Leary explain it uh, from Shark Tank. He was saying, this is what every real estate developer does. They say, my building's worth $400 million. And then someone comes along from the bank and they say, no, it's worth $300 million. We'll give you a loan on $300 million or whatever it is, whatever the it's number. It's a negotiation. But also, real estate pricing in general is a strange thing to, to say that's fraud because people overvalue their property all the time. I mean, it's a standard thing that people do. When someone has a house and it's worth $700,000, they start decide to list it as nine hundred thousand dollars, and the the real estate person says, "Well, you know, it's it's really it's, it's really pushing it." The guy's like, "That's what I want. I think it's worth nine hundred thousand dollars." Like people have always done weird shit like that, sure. and then when you have this leftist judge that says that Mar-a-Lago is worth eighteen million, Bro. like then you just showed all your silly hands. You showed you showed your hand because this is that's a crazy thing to say in a place that has the most expensive real estate on earth. Yeah, and I, I, yeah, and the Mar-a-Lago property is is not worth eighteen million dollars. I mean, that's absurd. Isn't it like eighteen acres? Yeah, it's huge. It covers both sides of, of the little you know key or whatever you call it, the little island. But the, the bigger question is the, the the question that was first raised by the presidency of Richard Nixon that is now coming to fruition with the with the presidency and the kind of ex presidency of Donald Trump. We have a democratic system that favors Trump. Uh, in the sense that he won in 2016, he's winning the primary right now for Republicans in, in 2024. Um, but you have a bureaucracy that is dead set against him. And the rhetoric amounts to a, a very odd claim. They, they essentially say, we want to keep him off the ballot. We want to put him in prison. We want to bankrupt him so he can't become the president, even if the people support him. We want to deprive the people of making the decision. So you want to take it out of the realm of politics and into the realm of administrative justice or the criminal justice system right. and adjudicate it in that way on bogus pretexts. I mean, the, the cases are bogus. Um, and so what you're, the question that we're raising is who actually rules in this country? Is it the American people who get to decide by their vote who represents them in the government? Or is it the permanent bureaucracy that has accumulated so much power it is a contest of how we think of our democratic system. And I'm of the mind that the people should decide, not the bureaucracy. Um, and this is a contest where Democrats are saying, essentially, we have to destroy democracy in order to save democracy. Democracy has very different meanings in the two usage, usages in, the, in that sentence. We have to destroy democracy as we've traditionally known it, electing a president through a vote of the people, in order to save democracy, which is ruled by expert opinion, ruled by the bureaucracy, and essentially left-wing hegemony, left-wing domination over institutions. And as someone who tries to maximize whatever I can do to push forward on these issues politically, it's not lost on me that if they can wipe out someone like Donald Trump, you know, we're, we're all table stakes, 
relatively. Yeah. Um, and, and they're going to have no hesitation because once they cross the Rubicon, metaphorically speaking, um, you know, that's when dissent becomes a crime. Yeah, that's the point. Trump always says it. They're not coming for me. They're coming for you. I'm just standing in the way. And that's kind of what's going on here right now. And I say that as someone that's not, I'm not particularly enthused about, about this election, obviously, or, or some of Trump's behavior in the primary or anything else. I'm being as honest as I possibly can as it relates to all of this. I, I don't think he can solve, you know, we played a video a day or two ago where he talked about, you know, I, I, we had, there was another candidate who said he, he would need eight years to do all the things. I can do them all in three months. It's like, no, you can't. Okay, fine. And it's a lot of braggadocious stuff. But Rufo is absolutely right about that. The, the, what they just tried to do was remove certain states, these at, attorney generals who are activists, basically Democrat activists, tried to get Trump off the ballot. Then it gets to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court, again, they did the right thing, 9-0, said, no, 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 we got to leave this to the people. We understand that it can't be us. It can't be the permanent state that decides who's going to be president. Like that would be terrible for democracy. 